Good evening and welcome to our midweek Bible study. Standing behind me is Richard Evans. Give him a wave, Richard. It is Richard's birthday on the 18th, or Thank was you. on the 18th or the 19th, and we want to wish him the very best. We love and appreciate Mr. Richard. All right, we'll catch you later, Richard. All right. All Bye, right. Jared. Be careful. I will. All right. What I want to talk about this morning is a God who is our last chance. When I think of um, last chances, I think of people like Peter, that if it wasn't for the Lord who gave him a last chance, there's no hope for Peter. And unless God gives us a last chance, there is, however, a sin that is unto death. That is not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. A sin unto death is simply one that you will not turn and repent of. In other words, any time that you have breath in your body, that you have a conscience that can be broken and contrite, and you're willing to turn and repent, then God forgives the sin. And that doesn't matter whether that is 10 years before you die, two minutes before you die. When we turn and repent, God forgives us. But I think of Peter. I think of what, what would I do if, you know, you turn to and you find this in the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter. Jesus is, is, is trying his disciples. He is maturing his disciples. They all turned, but eventually went on to die for the Lord. And so you see a maturing. There are Christians, there are people who believe that what they have done in life is so bad that they cannot get forgiveness. And so here's what we find in the book of Luke 22. Jesus turns to Peter and he says, Peter, I'm praying for you. I'm praying, verses 31 and 32, I'm praying that your faith does not fail you. Then the Lord makes an unusual statement. He said, when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. And so Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him. Jesus knew how he was going to deny him. Peter, Lord, I'll go to prison for you. Lord, I'll die for you. And man, before you know it, he's departed. And then you know the story of Peter denying the Lord and then eventually going out and weeping bitterly. And as I think of this story, <clears throat> I think of, of a series that was on TV, and, and I knew nothing about it. Uh, our son has access to about 1,600 acres where we enjoy going. There are seven lakes and 12 hunting houses. There is a cedar lodge in the big house with five bedrooms, and uh, I enjoy going there. I, that's God has just given me the opportunity through this just to relax. And I get to meet Joshua there, my son, one of our twin boys. And so I asked Josh, I said, where, where do I meet you? And he said, you can meet me in Scuba, Mississippi. Scuba. Where, where in the world is Scuba, Mississippi? Well, 
around, the best way for me to tell you is that if you're driving and come to the end of the world, you go just a little bit further and you find Scuba, Mississippi. Scuba, Mississippi is about 528 miles from Farmington. It takes about, oh, I don't know, seven, close to eight hours at least to get there. But you drive to Memphis and then to Tupelo. And at Tupelo, you get on 45 and you head uh, south west. It is about 40 miles maybe, maybe a little bit more south west of Tupelo, I mean uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And so the first time I went, I drive down there and I am a little bit early, so I just simply drive around Scuba, Mississippi. On Highway 45, which is an excellent highway, it's two lane, each way, medium, uh, it's a beautiful drive. But in Scuba, it's kind of like Westville, Arkansas. The downtown area is completely dead. There is nothing in Scuba, Mississippi. But as you drive on less than a mile, you're captivated. You're, you're just in awe as you come up on East Mississippi Community College. And I was mentioning this to Todd Johnson, and Todd said, yeah, there was a movie made there, or a series made there, and the series is called <coughs> Last Chance You. And I really don't know whether that stands for This Is Your Last Chance, or The Last Chance University. But the East Mississippi Community College, it's in the middle of pine fields. It is gorgeous. Their campus, but what is really beyond imagination is their football field. Their coach, Buddy Stevens, Wofford Oren Stevens, has won five NJCAA national championships, three of them in a row. And so they have this gorgeous facility there. They have a football field and training. It's just, after driving through Scuba, you don't expect that. Buddy Stevens has coached several NFL players, Chad Cully and uh, Jaron Reed. But East Mississippi Community College, the series called Last Chance You. And so it takes football players who either cannot make the grade and drop out. They get into trouble and they are dismissed from the football program. You have people like John Franklin III who got into a fist fight, closed up his fist and hit a young lady in a bar and it's on video. He was dismissed from the Florida College. No one would take him. That was just totally unacceptable. And so East Mississippi Community College accepted him. And as he began to tell the story, his parents they will let you know that he was not trained to ever treat a lady that way. And they were disappointed. Their, their world stopped. That day stopped their lives. 
And so with no one else giving um, <clears throat> Franklin a chance, he was through. No academics, no education, no football, no future. And so he tells the story, and, and as you see these, these young men, um, disrespectful, they, they don't care. School means nothing to them. They want to play football. They are heroes back in their hometown. They go back there and they are treated like royalty, but there are no jobs. And in the real world, outside of those little communities they live in, there's, there's no life. And as Franklin, through this series, tells his story of the three boys deserted by their mother shortly after birth, the father got to hold John Franklin in handcuffs as he was going to prison. And so you have the three boys Two of them are in football. One of them was not able to make it in football. But he is there at Eastern Mississippi, working there, washing the, uh, the football players' clothes. But these three young boys were sent to foster homes, one home after another, after another. They talk about having no food to eat. They talk about being tied up and taped up. And the oldest of them would take them to a grocery store. And as they were in the grocery store, they would eat as they were walking through and then they would leave. That's the only food they had. And then you think, how in the world did these boys survive? There is no hope. And if it wasn't for East Mississippi Community College in Scuba, Mississippi, no hope. And then there's Ollie. Ollie is a young man, cannot pay attention, does not care about school, just gives up so easy. And it goes back and they interview aunts and uncles and people in his life. His father came in one night, shot his mother, and then left the trailer, there was another gunshot. And Ollie's father shot himself. And so you wonder, of Ron Ollie, if it was not for East Mississippi Community College, taking a young man whose life is absolutely ruined and without hope, there would be no future. And as Miss Wagner, who is the sports advisor, who helps these young men stay in class, you've got to have passing grades. And she helps old Ollie finally make an A. An 89, they round it off to 90 and they give him an A. And he's able to graduate. In all of this, it is for the redemption of these young men whose life need a chance, someone to believe in them. And so you've got people like John Franklin III. You have people like Ron Ollie. The first season closes, and the coach, Buddy Stevens, watches it, and he does not like what he sees. He does not like what he sees in the, the, uh, the training of the boys, the games of the boys, but he does not like what he sees in himself. And I mean, if you're a Christian, you have to force yourself to watch the first season, part one. And he goes back for part two. 
one of his resolutions was that he was not going to curse again. And of course, you can imagine the language on a, uh, on a college football team. And so a couple had come up to him and began to talk to him, and they were in their late 70s. And as he looks over at the lady, he's thinking, that woman has watched me curse and curse and curse. He stops the conversation and he looks at the lady and he says, I am so sorry for my language on that TV program. And she smiles and she looks at him and she says, Everybody loves sausage, but they do not want to know how it's made. Everybody wants success. Every parent wants successful children, but many parents still don't know how to do it, how it's done through love and through tough love, sometimes through a lot of abuse. And so you have this program where a man, Buddy Stevens, can take young men that without their help there have no hope whatsoever of making it in this world, just going back to their hometown and usually be the boys on the corner, the ones who sell the drugs. And so they get a second chance. And I think to myself, if Buddy Stevens can do that and bring success into a lot of these young men's lives. And of course, Buddy Stevens has a staff. Uh, and Miss Wagner's one of them that works with these boys every day to make sure they get through. If it wasn't for them, there'd be no hope. And if it wasn't for the Lord we would have no hope. If you have your Bibles, and I pray that you do, and that you're there with your family and you're reading together and studying together, turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 as we begin reading in verse 6. Last Chance You is the series. And I'm going to suggest that without our Christ, without our Lord taking a rejected life with no hope, we won't make it. And so we, we ask our Lord to be our coach, to give us a chance so that we might be able to make the changes in our lives. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we begin reading in verse 6. Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working for a living? He goes on and he talks here, and he, and he talks about us as God's children. Do you and I have a future or are we like those who are foreigners? Are we alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and without hope? I'd like to think if Buddy Stevens can turn a man physically around and give them hope. I know the Lord can turn us around and give us hope. We have, according to the book of Hebrews, we have a faith that's based on a substance. It's based on a foundation, that foundation being the historical record of God and his faithfulness. And then we begin to erect a lifestyle lifestyle that brings about hope. Hope, because our coach, Jesus Christ, is in our life, and he stays with us, and he trains us, and there is love for us, but there's also tough love. 
Scuba, Mississippi, a place where I go to fish, has a completely different meaning. And so I'll be going, or I'm there now, fishing. But I'm going to drive back around Scuba, Mississippi after seeing part one and some of part two of Last Chance You. And that place will take on a different meaning. I'd like to know that I can get to meet and maybe even talk to Buddy Stevens, the man who works on a daily basis to help these young men become successful in life. At this time, if you have not put on Christ in the water grave of baptism, it's the only way the Bible tells us how to get into Christ. Romans chapter 6. Know ye not that many of you have been baptized into Christ Jesus, have put on Jesus Christ. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Brethren, if you're going to die in the Lord, friend, if you're going to die in the Lord, you have to live in the Lord. And the only way to get into the Lord is to be baptized, immersed for the remission of your sins. When we are baptized, our sins are washed away. We are no longer servants of sin. And from that, Christ gives us the strength to walk in the newness of life. But better than that, we are no longer strangers. We are no longer enemies of the cross. We are no longer removed from the commonwealth of Israel, spiritually, the church. He writes our name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and we have hope. I hope this lesson has helped you, helped you to draw nearer to the Lord and to realize that there's nothing in life that we can do that cannot be repented of forgiven, and God says, when you're converted, feed my sheep. God places trust in us, and I pray that trust is also in you, and that you learn to live a life that's victorious and a life that was filled with assurance and with hope.